So guys, welcome back to the channel. We're reviewing an independent bottler today. We've got Signatory Vintage, a little bit of an unknown distillery today. We've got the Inchgoer Distillery. We're talking 23 years old, so got a bit of age, this one. They've done some funky things with the casks. So I don't know about you, Gus, but I can't wait to try this one. This sounds like it's gonna be absolutely amazing. Can't wait to try it. Please, let's get going. Let's do it. Cool, so next up we've got uh, Signatory Vintage. We're trying the Inchgoer, which like I said before, it's a bit of a random distillery because they don't, I don't think they even have their own labeling um, bottles from, from there. So um, one that you can only find from independent bottlers, but most of the whiskey actually goes to blends. Uh, but you know, some of the best whiskeys I've tried come from kind of those distilleries. So I'm um, pretty excited to try this one, which probably most of our subscribers um, and members haven't tried before. Yeah, it's, a, it's quite a rare distillery. You don't really see it that often. I, I think I've tried it a couple of times in some of those special releases programs from, from Diageo, which yeah. owns the distillery, and they've all been amazing. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about this one. Yeah, so this one, um, it's very, very specific. It's distilled in 1997. <laughs> put in a cask in 1997, and then it's 23 years old. So this is the oldest one we're trying today. Oh. It's not a uh, completely sherry cask like the last one we tried. Um, so this one is actually spent most of its life in bourbon's hogsheads casks, a few different ones. And then they took some spirit from a few different ones, blended it and put it into a single sherry cask um, to finish for, I think it's off the top of my head, 34 months. Was this finished by Inchgower themselves in sherry casks or uh, Signature Vintage by the yeah. cask and they finished it themselves? Like where do independent bottlers come in and buy the spirit, do they buy the new make, do they buy it midway through the maturation, or, or do they buy finished product, or is it just a little bit of everything? Yeah, I mean, there's no real clear cut, as we're talking independent bottles as a whole here, not this whiskey okay. specifically, but um, there's no clear cut answer on that because the answer is, it kind of happens all the different ways, mm -hmm. um, depending on the specific independent bottler. You know, obviously, if that independent bottle has been around for, like Gordon McPhail, we talked about before, has been around for 125 years, then yeah, they have their own stocks maturing. Uh, like this one, which I suspect is the case, you know, they bought Spirit, which comes from those multiple casks, and they've recast it into their own finishing casks, yeah. um, and then left it for the 34 months. Um, or maybe even they just go, this is just such a good cask on its own. We Why don't need, it exactly, Why we don't need it? to do anything. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes even they'll do that, but they'll still take the cask filled. It's already spent a time in the original distillery's warehouse and then they'll age it a little bit more and they'll still decide, oh, we don't need to do anything else to this. So kind of, there's no real clear cut answer. Um, this one specifically, um, hard to tell because a lot of that information they don't tell you. They're not that open about it, but it probably would be a fair suggestion that they probably did the finish themselves on this yeah. one. Um, I Which means be that even, even within a uh, potentially, we're suspecting, finished by, by the independent bottlers. So it just gives it a complete new, it's a complete new take on, on, on what Inchgower yes. product usually tastes like. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to try it. So should we get going? Yeah, let's do it. I think this one, yeah, 59.5%. So um, ordinarily, I would probably have tried the whiskeys the other way around, because as we know, yeah. you know, the, the Mortlac was just so big and bold. Um, but this one being the 59.5% and having tried it before uh, before today, I think definitely it was the wise move to do this one afterwards. Yeah, well, and obviously, you know, the extra age this one's got on it. We're talking 23 years old now, exactly. not 15. So it's gonna have some depth and complexity there too. We'll, tell, we'll um, see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Might, might, might have to bring out some, some water for this one. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Let's, let's give it a taste uh, on its own first, and yeah. we'll see how we go. Um, I'm always a big fan of trying at all the different kind of ABVs and finding out what works best. I mean, it's all, it's all a very personal experience, right? Like, I might love it at the cast strength like this. You might love it with a little bit of water. You know, some people even drink it as low as 20%. I think in some spirits competitions, um, people cut it back to 20% to try and get that full um, expression of flavors, so. Yeah, I always like drinking it as it comes. 
straight from the bottle because there's a reason why it's like that, right? Like there's yeah. a reason why the, in this case, independent bottle are selected to do a cast strength with this specific cask or with this specific batch. And if it's just like that, and that's the way it was intended to be drunk or the first approach to this whiskey, then why not try it that way? And then we, we'll, we'll find what works best for us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this one, it's got, definitely got the punch of alcohol, but at the same Absolutely. time, it's a little bit more subtle than the, um, than, the, than the Morlock. It makes sense for it to be like that. Definitely the alcohol's coming through. I kind of waiting a little bit for it to open up and that a little bit of the top alcohol to, to evaporate so we can get a little bit deeper into those smells. Definitely the one thing that gets me straight away is it smells much more kind of creamier and vanilla and I guess that's that bourbon yeah, cast absolutely. character. That, that bourbon's definitely coming through, but but the sherry's there. Like, it, it, I think, at least on the nose, it's a good mix of, of those two. So sometimes, which is hard to find, like usually, yeah. a lot of the sherry cast expressions are usually just finishing sherry, yeah. especially at such high age statements. Yeah. But it's hard to find one that balances the two well. And, and at least, haven't tried it yet, but at least on the nose, it's a good balance. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, 23 year old and doing exclusively, there's definitely some um, distilleries that do it, but trying to do exclusively sherry cask at such an old age is, it's very challenging. It's very yeah. hard to get right because, you know, it just becomes the sherry and tannic and not a lot else. So exactly. getting that balance right. It's a little bit overall. Sometimes. Yeah, the way they manage that is just using the more um, refill sherry casts rather yeah. than doing first fill for, for that length of time and maybe finishing it in a first fill or something like that. So, um, so yeah. I definitely on this one get a nice citrus character too. Definitely. More yeah. like a lemon peel or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot more stringent, if yeah. you know what I mean. And that might be even the, the higher ABV coming through with that one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot softer on the on the dried fruits, which are yeah. typical from the from a sherry cask. But they're definitely there, and, and I think it's a nice nose. Like it's it's subtle, it's really elegant. It, it, it's something that will not overpower you. It doesn't get too strong, and yeah, I, I really enjoy it yeah. so far. And yeah, let's give it a try. Yeah, I I think I'm getting those more kind of classic Speyside style notes with this one. That like yeah. kind of like it's a bit fresher, even though it's older, obviously it's a bit yeah. fresher, like green apples and it kind of like, I don't know why that creamy notes, vanilla and those apple notes I'm getting, it just reminds me of like an apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, who doesn't love apple pie, right? <laughs> Should we taste it? Let's do it. Oof, that one's got a kick to it. Yeah. There's a lot of flavor there. I think this one might actually be one that we should try with water. Let me see. Um, I think it's it's pretty approachable. Like I can I can quite comfortably drink it like that. Yeah. But I just feel like maybe it needs a little bit more time or some or a little bit of water. But the flavors are just so compact. It's really hard to kind of pick it all out. Yeah. Before we get on the water, so I tried this one and and, I, and I've had a fair sh my fair share of very hard wine casks. And I'm getting a very wine cask feel in the mouth, like it, it becomes very tannic, but in a good way. And, it, and it, that feeling where those tannins start drying your mouth a little bit, and which I, me personally, that's, I love that. Like that's, that's something that if, if a whiskey can bring that in a nice balanced way, that's, that's, that, that would always be a personal favorite for me. Yeah, oh definitely. And I think, you know, people underestimate that tannins um, just come from those wine casts or fortified wine casts, like the sherry cast finish, but also, you know, oak has tannins in it naturally exactly. as well. So, you know, once you stick, start getting a whiskey that's aged 23, um, 23 years, definitely that character is going to become more apparent too. Absolutely. Uh, try a little bit of water, not too much. Get for you. Get a good swirl. Yeah. Oh, straight away. Yeah. It's just a little bit more open. I'm getting more like fresh peach coming through or something that, like those, that. Th those like orchard-like fruits yeah. are coming through a fair bit. It's a, it's a very autumn drink. <laughs> like it, feel, it feels like autumn. Uh, yeah. 
I yeah. wanna wrap a little bit of a blanket, put on a sweater <laughs> and just hug this one up. But yeah, it's, it's really nice. Oh, it just smells so much sweeter now. Mm. That apple's coming through a little bit stronger. Definitely, okay, so you said apple pie. I'm thinking more <laughs> apple and some dried fruits pie. Yeah, sounds sounds the cinnamon. <laughs> they chucked a few sultanas in yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's amazing. It's it, it's really it's really something else. The finish not as long yeah. as the Morlan, but agree. definitely nice. Definitely has something there. I'm getting the this is where the sherry is coming a little bit forward for me. Yeah. At the end, you know, on the palate, definitely those dried fruits are. are I'm getting those there. What, yeah. do you, like, what do you think? Yeah, me too, definitely. Um, it, I find it to be a much drier finish. It's quite yeah. astringent. It's kind of like sucking the moisture out exactly. of my mouth. Exactly, yeah. Um, and yeah, definitely I get, I get a lot of actually the spice coming through as well, like more like the baking spice, like a, a nutmeg or something, yeah. just, and it's really drying out my mouth. It's, it's very pleasant, um, not in a bad way at all. No. Seriously drink this one. Uh, I, can, I can have a few trams of this one, no problem. Even go like, this one, it can definitely stand up to, I feel like, quite a bit of water. Because um, there's definitely a lot of flavor in there and um, it just comes out so well. Oh yeah, especially on the taste. Like, I think the nose, mm. the nose opens up so quickly with the water. Yeah. But the taste, like, if you give it a good, solid kind of, you know, teaspoon of water, yeah, I exactly. think it really just opens up. Yeah, this bottle, 181 out of 690. Yeah. Made available for the whole world. Yeah. So we're lucky to have a few yeah. in our warehouse. To be very transparent, I would say there's probably less than 100 bottles in Australia. Wow. And um, maybe even more like, you know, 50 bottles. Okay. And um, most of them we have now. Okay. Because otherwise we wouldn't be able to get, get, get them out to, these, to all our subscribers. So if you, if, they, if you want it, I would suggest if you try it and you like it, be quick because yeah. this one is going to go fast. Well, <laughs> I, might, I might get one before you guys, you have a chance. So. Just, just so you know, there might be one less for you because I'm, I might be taking one home. It's, it's that good, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, this one definitely, like, the more I come back to it, the more with that time, it just gets better. I think, Gus, as far as complexity goes with this whiskey, you really, it, it doesn't get much more complex than this. It was amazing. It was big but subtle at the same time. Those cherry flavors were there. The bourbon hogshead that was where it spent the majority of its time really came through perfectly balanced highly recommended please i would i mean cannot say it enough you should go get one of these yeah i mean there's not that many bottles here so guys make sure you jump on the website whiskeyloot.com also don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we've got a ton more reviews coming out we're releasing them constantly so stay up to date hit that little bell to stay notified and see you next time